We are speaking of the keys of the kingdom. And our foundational scripture can be found in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. In this verse of scripture, Jesus is speaking to Peter and he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Today we're going to be talking specifically about the key of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh my, but this is a really important key because it is a key of power. Yes, a key of power. Uh, let's ask the question now. Just what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Let's go to the Word. The Word should always be our standard. It is truth and should be our standard. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised. Let's see what gift this is. It's, uh, he goes on to say, that which you have heard me speak about. And verse 5, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go to um, verse 8 of that same chapter. Verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is God's gift, and it is a gift of power and it empowers you to be a witness. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to read 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, and they were all together in one place, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So here we see an amazing event happening on the day of Pentecost when they were assembled together in one place. The sound as of a rushing wind and evidence of the Holy Spirit as tongues of fire. Uh, yes, and even the evidence of speaking in other tongues. So you see then, with the coming of the Holy Spirit was power of God, and not only that, but a purifying work of God, and not only that, the stamp of God upon these ones that would be so used um, in um, ministry as led by 
the Holy Spirit himself. So, we see from Scripture then that the Holy Spirit is God's gift. We see that it is a gift of power. And we see that it is a gift that is freely given, freely given to all, all who were assembled together, received. And it is now, or I, I should say, He, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is now given to all who will receive. Um, second Timothy, um, Paul was writing to Timothy and speaking of the Holy Spirit in uh, Second Timothy 1, 7, Paul said that the Holy Spirit is not a spirit of fear, but rather a spirit of power power, love, and a sound mind. That is very important. There are many who um, are in a place of fear. And if that is true for you, ask the Lord to fill you now with the Holy Spirit, who is a spirit not of fear. No but power, love, and soundness of mind. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is an immersion in the very Spirit of God. Think of this as an example. You can very easily sit down at the table and drink a glass of water, at which point you would have water filling you. In the same way, you can look to the Lord and ask Him to save you. You can call upon His name. You can look to Him to be saved, and you will be as you call upon Him, recognizing Him as the one who gave His life for you, the one who shed His blood for you. Then, as you call upon His name, you will surely be saved, and you never should doubt that, because that is His work. And when He does uh, that glorious, wonderful work, we can uh, know that we do have His Spirit in us. Now, if you were to drink a glass of water, that's one thing. But if you were to go swimming, that would be different. You would be immersed in water, in the pool or ocean or wherever. But the point is, in one case, you can drink a glass of water and have the water filling you. In the other case, in going swimming, you will be immersed in water. Uh, take that as an example, as a parallel to what I am explaining to you right now, the difference between a salvation experience and that second experience of literally being baptized, baptized in the Holy Spirit. All right, we've seen just what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. What will it do? It will change you. The baptism in the Holy Spirit will change you. That is exactly what it did for those first disciples. Those disciples ran in fear when Jesus was arrested. They deserted him. But look at the change 
after the coming of the Holy Spirit. They were so filled with power and boldness, they became witnesses, witnesses of Jesus, his life, his sacrifice, and the way of salvation. It truly saved um, and made a huge difference um, in their case. Uh, certainly, it did change them from having fear to having boldness. Now, remember this. We are talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a key of the kingdom. This is not so much a teaching about the baptism of the Holy Spirit as it is learning how to use this as a key, learning how to use this as a key to lock up the devil, to bind him, to bind him, and to unlock heavenly realities. Therefore, the question becomes, how do I use this key? You use this key by praying in the Spirit. By that I mean praying in other tongues. And let me say this to you. There is no sound that any human being can utter but what God understands it. And he's asking you to take a step of childlike faith by uh, vocalizing that which you do not understand as a step of faith believing that he can take that and make it work for good. I know of a case, uh, a friend of mine in ministry told me of a vision that she saw and she saw a woman sitting in a chair and uh, she was just at the end of herself and just sighed. That was all she could do. And the Lord gave her this vision and spoke this to her. I receive that sigh as her prayer. There are times when uh, we just are in that same state. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, there's nothing, no sound that you can utter, no syllable that he cannot understand. Take that step of faith and utter whatever syllable you may have. Even if it makes no sense, it's a step of childlike faith. So, you use this key then, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You use it by praying in the Spirit and also by addressing the devil with boldness. I have yet another friend who shared this with me. I thought that this was a wonderful insight. I've thought about it many times since. She said to me, she said, you know something? The devil listens to you just like our children do. How true, how true. You can say to your child, come in here, and he may or may not do it. But if you get really firm and really bold, I said to you, come in here now. If you get firm and bold, then the child will obey you. In the same way the devil listens to us like our children do. So address the devil with boldness and you tell him to back down. He knows when you mean what you say. Now, we are going to act on Luke 11, 13. I love this scripture. It says, if you then, though you are carnal, know how to give good gifts to your children, 
How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? This scripture says, if you ask believing, then he will give. Let's ask. Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus to take on my sin, to die in my place. Jesus, I believe that you did that for me. I thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to fill me with power, with love, with soundness of mind. Holy Spirit, come into my life Baptize me, immerse me in your spirit. In Jesus' name, I look to you now to fill my mouth with utterances pleasing unto God. And take that step of faith and speak out those syllables. Yama hada bakahila, yama kahade, yabakaha. Whatever the Lord gives to you, utter it as obedience to his word. Amen.